This week's video is a whole bunch of short welding clips showing TIG, MIG, stick, and a couple of projects. It's from 2015, and the reason I'm doing that this week is because the 2015 DVD is now complete. I make welding videos every week. At the end of each year, I put them all on a DVD set. I offer them up for sale at weldmonger.com. That helps me offset the cost of metals, gases, and all that stuff for doing these videos. Here's what it looks like. It's a four disc set. It's got a nice table of contents on the back so you can tell exactly what's on each disc. Lots of arc shots, lots of information. If you think having a DVD like this would help you up your game, maybe help you get a raise on your job, or maybe help you pass a welding test to get a job, if it makes sense for you, head over to weldmonger.com, grab a copy. If not, that's cool too. Grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of something, sit back, relax, enjoy this video full of welding tips. There are three things that most people do wrong that prevents them from making a good TIG weld, especially when they're first learning, and that is holding too long an arc, using too much torch angle, and not keeping the hot tip of that rod shielded with argon. Now this is included in the 2014 DVD as well, but it bears repeating. It's so important that I put it in the 2015 DVD also. Here I'm tightening the arc up just a little bit, but not, not enough still. You see that boomerang shaped puddle that means it's not reaching the root of the joint the, the molten metal is not flowing into the root of the joint it's not uniform the rod is balling up instead of metering into the puddle nicely to produce a uniform weld here I've tightened the arc length up amperage hasn't changed a bit I'm keeping the tip of that rod shielded things are going a whole lot better here's an example where a small weld is called out and keeping a tight arc and keeping the torch angle to a minimum really is important on keeping the weld size down. This is a lap joint again in the same thickness metal, 11 gauge cold rolled, using a number 8 gas lens, but trying to keep the weld to not completely reach up to the, to the full thickness of the metal. The same three things that go wrong on steel tend to do the same thing on aluminum. Too long an arc like this gets you started off on the wrong foot. You start off with a really big blob of weld and it's very hard to get it neck down into something reasonable. You see porosity forming there, you can see lack of fusion, the weld is not flowing into the root of the joint. Here I'm using a, a slightly tapered electrode with a much tighter arc. Things are going a lot better. Keeping that rod nearby, the, the tip of the rod is shielded, it's not balling up, and it's a lot easier to control. Here's another angle just kind of showing the same thing. There are several different techniques for MIG welding uphill using short circuit. Here are a couple of them. This is using a series of triangles which basically just keeps you on the front of the puddle. The leading edge of the puddle, that's where the penetration happens and you want to stay there by sweeping the arc across the front of the puddle and into the root of the joint. Again, this is a series of triangles but what also works is, is a bunch of upside down V motions and the same concept is, is present here. It keeps the arc at the front of the puddle, keeps the arc sweeping across the front of the puddle, and keeps the penetration going good. A cut, polish, and etch while the puddle is still fresh on your mind is a very good educational tool. You can correlate what just happened with the results like you see here. It's a very good learning tool, but it's also a good tool to kind of educate you on the, the risks of going downhill over hot rolled steel using short circuit MIG. It can reveal some problems like you see here. Lots of lack of fusion there. 7018 stick welding, going vertical uphill can be a little bit of a problem when you're learning. Same things apply. You want, you want to amperage hot enough to where the rod won't stick, but you can't, go, you can't go crazy with the amperage. Some really good practice is just padding beads like this to get your vertical technique down and your settings down. And they translate right over to welding a vertical test joint like this 3G open, open root with a backing strap. On a test like this, given the choice, the second pass I would weave just like I'm doing here, kind of holding the toes from side to side, pausing a little bit, not spending much time across the middle. Problem with that is a lot of jobs will not allow you to weave, so you need to learn how to do stringers all the way out. Root pass and then stacking two over top of the root pass. And really the trick here is leaving yourself plenty of room for that last bead in a series, whether it's two beads, three beads, whatever. Don't trap yourself in the corner. Leave plenty of room to get that rod in there. 
Again, this is a cover pass, and it's just really the same thing as stacking beads on that vertical padding that I showed earlier. An overhead weld test a lot of times goes along with the vertical. That's a common test. A 3G and a 4G with a backing strap is very common. Same thing applies. You've got you to be careful not to trap yourself on that second bead or third bead or whatever. You've got to leave yourself room to get in there. Another big tip is you don't want to go colder on, on overhead. You want to have it good and hot. Just use a, a real tight arc. The cup before on TIG welding, this can help. Just get a cup, solo cup or whatever on a kitchen counter. This is the motion. It's a lot like walking a 55 gallon drum across a shop floor. Back and forth, but you got to twist your wrist a little bit. And if you do that, it, the skills kind of transfer over. It's very much like, like just using that solo cup on a kitchen counter. Now, if you can't learn how to walk the cup, there's always free handing. And if you're going to free hand, a TIG finger really helps. As you, as you could imagine, that, that pipe is getting pretty hot right here. And so you need something, something on your finger to kind of keep it from cooking. Socket welds like this are, are generally done using more than one pass. So at the very least, two passes, a root pass and then a cover pass. In this case, I'm free handing it, just propping close to the weld and trying to sort of mimic the weave that would be done walking the cup. You can't always walk the cup. Sometimes there's just stuff in the way. This is a motorcycle filter, oil filter housing, and a requirement here is no melt through. So pulsing can help in this type of scenario. This is two pulses a second, background current set to about 20%, pulse time on set to about 20%. Really limits penetration, and that's the key here because there's a seal that goes on the other side there. Angle of electrode on stick wells, especially on round parts like this, is very important because it's easy to get out of scope very quickly if you're not always thinking about it. So how you hold your hands, how you position the electrode in the electrode holder, both make a big difference, can help you keep your electrode angle right. This particular well was done using Lincoln Excalibur 1-8-7018s at around 140 amps. This is a clip of a video from 2015 where I built a welding cart for a Lincoln Power MIG 210 or a small inverter machine about the same size as that. And it was a lot of fun and turned out okay. Well, hey, that about wraps it up. And I hope you got something out of this video. Again, the, the online store is at weldmonger.com if you're interested. Either way, I'll see you here next time.